Hi everyone, it's Day and welcome to Spanglish Generation. We are continuing with the videos based on your suggestions and I encourage you to send me topics that you want us to explore. Before I continue, if you find value in the content that I post weekly on this channel, please go ahead and support by subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you don't miss a beat and make sure that you like, comment, and of course, share. You can also follow Spanglish Generation on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook so you can become part of the daily conversation. One of my Instagrammers asked the following, what do you think about Vivo? Whitewashed? I'm so glad somebody asked about Vivo because I was waiting to talk about it ever since I saw it a few weeks ago. If you haven't watched it already, I highly recommend that you do. Go ahead and check it out. So what do I honestly think? Let's get into it. First of all, I have to get this off my chest. I was very impressed by the music, with the music. The music. Music is one of the things that the regime has never been able to take from Cubans. It's been the way Cubans bond and vent and love. It's also been the cause of great censorship and oppression, but music and art have always proven to be more powerful than anything that stands in its way. I'm not an expert in the matter, but I was blown away by the melodies, the quality, and the harmony. In my humble opinion, it was a spectacular soundtrack that truly represents the strengths and the roots of Cuban music, but very well adapted for a broader audience. Now, I'll tell you something that disappointed me. Vivo is a sad story. It's a story of separation, of frustrated love, but I guess it's also a story of the hard decisions that we must make for our passion and for loved ones as well. But then when you think about it, man, that is the Cuban reality. The Cuban reality is a sad story. Family, friends, lovers having to choose between pursuing their dreams abroad and remaining next to the ones they love. Cuba's system has separated loved ones for years, forcing them to make the most difficult decisions. Now, I love the black representation in the character of Andres and throughout the film, because if you didn't know, the percentage of people of color and Afro-Cubans is bigger than the Cuban census reported to Google. I know there are things that may seem watered down to fit an audience of children, but we as adults can see past the bright colors and the upbeat music, and we see the pain that has identified us for so many years. We also realize in the end that Vivo ended up being a balsero after all. Gloria Stefan's voice fits perfectly with Marta, like kind of like the classic Cuban divas. And that last song really resonates with the reality beyond music. It has been the story that smarked thousands of Cubans that have left home leaving love behind. I am happy and proud that as Cubans, we have this representation on a platform such as Netflix, especially now that Cuba is going through an unprecedented historical moment. I wish you help others see past the animation and the funny dialogue by sharing this video so that other people realize that this story is not made up. The struggle and suffering of Cubans being separated is very real. Have you watched Vivo? What do you think? Let me know in the comment section. And I thank you so much for watching. Keep writing to me. Keep suggesting topics. I love you guys. God bless you. I'll see you next week. Time comes, don't postpone it. When others doubt and out, you don't condone it. Truth be told, yourself is your toughest opponent. When your moment comes, grab hold and own it. Never let go, stand tall.